Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. I use it in almost every one of my videos, but I haven't done a good tech help video on exactly what docommand.openform is all about and what all of those parameters mean. There's lots you can do with it, and we've only scratched the surface of it. So in this video, we're going to run down a bunch of different uses for docommand.openform. Now, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you probably saw me use do command dot open form. It's what you use to open another form, right? Here's the main menu form and the main menu form just open the customer list form. And from the customer list form, I can open up the customer form, right? That's do command open form. Now, at its basic level, all it is, is this do command open form and then a form name. Okay. But there's all kinds of stuff you can put after it. There's lots of different options in here. Some of them are completely useless. Some of them I use all the time, like the where condition. All right, in this video, we're going to talk about them. By the way, if you haven't done any VBA programming before and you want to learn, now's a great time. Go watch Intro to VBA. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. In fact, a little bit of do command open form. That's one of the examples we do in this video. So go watch this, then come on back. All right, so. Here's do command open form, and you can see I got a bunch of different commas in here because I want to get to this option, which is the where condition. We'll talk about this one first. The where condition is where you can specify criteria for the other form that you're opening. Now, if you want to just open the form and show all records, you don't need that. You literally just need that. Okay, but if you put that where condition in there, it'll now open up the customer form and show you the records where the customer ID equals the customer ID field on whatever form you happen to currently be on, which is customer list. You can see that right up there. So on customer list, which is this form, let me close this and open it back up again, right? Here's the customer ID field. So if I'm sitting on this one and I double click here or hit the open button, right? It runs that code and it opens a customer where it's customer number nine. But you can also put any other kind of aware condition in here that you want. You could say something like state, right, the state field, state equals, and then you could just put it right inside the quotes if you want to, right, you could put New York in there. Now remember, quotes inside of quotes, you need double, double quotes, right? So if you wanna put a string value in there, it looks like that, all right? So if I save it now, and if I run it and I open the customer, I get all the states where it equals New York. See, and there's three of them, okay? And if you wanna grab that field off of this form, like this, you need another quote like this, right? Like that, see? And now it gets the state field off of this form and that becomes a double quote and that becomes a double quote. These double, double quotes get very, very confusing, but I bring them up again here because A, lots of people get stuck on them and B, you're gonna run into this a lot if you do any kind of criteria here with strings. All right, strings always need those double, double quotes. I got a whole separate video that goes into a lot more about double quotes, double, double quotes, and all kinds of stuff. So go check this video out if you wanna learn more about this topic. All right, but let's put this back to something simple. Customer ID equals customer ID. Okay, now let's take a look at some of these other options that are in here. Let's go back to the first one. View as AC form view equals normal. This is how you're going to view the form when it opens. Now, if you wanna see the different options, backspace and hit comma, and it will show you that list there with the uh, IntelliSense, all right? The default is normal. Now, two of these you'll never use because they're, never, they're not in Access anymore. There's pivot chart and pivot table. These used to be available in older versions of Access. Microsoft got rid of it, I think uh, 2013 or so. So these are just in here for backward compatibility. Ignore them. If you wanna do a pivot table or a pivot chart, use Excel. Now, design view is okay for you, the developer. If you want to make a database with a button in it that opens a form in design view so that you can then quickly go in there and play with it, I have this in my database. I got a couple spots where I'm always making tweaks to a form. So I just put a button there to open it up in design view. You can certainly do that. Your end users, though, should never be poking around in design view, so you don't want to make that for them. DS is data sheet view. Again, I almost never use data sheet views for forms, but that's, you know, basically the table view. Okay, layout view, if you want to use that, eh, again, not one of my favorites. Normal, 
is normal, that's what we usually use. And then there's preview, which is kind of like a print preview version, but we don't print forms, right? We print reports, so I'm never gonna use that one either. So out of this list, I say AC normal, which is the default view, is 99.9% .9 of the time, that's what you're gonna work with, okay? Okay. And since it is the default, we can get rid of that. We don't even need that anymore. All right, what's next up here? Let's, uh, actually to make this easier, let's just get rid of that stuff there. All right, so we got comma, we don't need that. Comma is the filter name is next. Now the filter name is not what you think. You can actually create saved filters with forms, but you know what? I never use them. I haven't used one in 30 years, so I don't bother with them. We're not gonna use it, just ignore filter name, okay? Where condition is the next thing. We just talked about that. That's the first thing we talked about. That's how you can control what data is displayed when you open up the form, okay? Okay. Data mode is the next one. Now this is actually pretty handy. Um, AC form property settings is the default value. Now what that means is it's gonna look at the property settings in the form itself as to whether or not you can add records, edit records, delete records, and so on. There are properties for all of those things. All right, so if you just use that, it's gonna use the form properties only. But you can override those settings with this command. So AC form add will put you into data entry mode only. It's the same as the data entry mode property in the form. So if you put AC form add in here and then try to open a customer, it doesn't matter. It's gonna go to a blank new record and you're in add a record mode, okay? Same thing with the other ones, okay? AC form edit means no matter what the form's property settings are, even if allow edits is off in the property settings, if you do that, it will allow you to edit the record, okay? Read only is exactly what it says. If you want to uh, open it out on only show data, you don't want the user to be able to edit stuff, you can do that. This is a good setting if you've got a form where normally like the managers can get in there and edit stuff, but the re regular users can't. You can make them a separate button. And now with read only, if they come in here and try to do something, yeah, they can't, I'm typing right now and nothing's happening. Okay, so those settings are definitely helpful. Okay, the default is AC form property settings. We're gonna leave that alone, all right? Next is window mode, and it's off my screen here. Let me slide over so you can see it more. Let's see if I can get it all on the screen at once. There we go. It's window mode, AC window mode is AC window normal. There's your options here, normal. We've got dialogue, hidden, and AC icon. Now icon, used to be in the old days, it would be an icon on the bottom of the screen, but now it just opens the window minimized. That's all that does. So if you, go, if you pick AC icon, all right, and if you open it now, it opens up down here minimized. And you can use other VB code if you want to, to restore it or to close it. I almost never use that one. I, I would say probably don't bother with that one. All right, what else we got? Then there's uh, hidden, which opens up the window hidden. Now this is actually sometimes helpful. I sometimes open hidden timer windows with a timer event running in it. The user can't see it, but it's still open and it's still doing stuff. Okay, or you got a background process running, that kind of stuff. And of course, you can use other VB code to make that visible. You can say forms for name visible dot visible equals true, and it will make it visible. Okay. Dialog is a dialog form. What a dialog form is, it opens up modal and pop up, and it stops execution of your of your code until the user closes that form. If you don't know what modal and pop up is, go watch this video. Modal basically means that it's it's in front, and and you can't go behind it. You can't do anything to any of the forms behind that window until you close the one on top. And pop-up just means it stays on top of other windows all the time. You can be modal and not pop-up, you can be pop-up and not modal, or you can be both modal and pop-up, or not mo or neither modal nor pop-up. <laughs> it could be any, any of those four combinations. So if I pick AC Dialog here, and I open up a form, all right, now it opened up on my other screen. That's one thing with pop-up windows, is they open up anywhere, wherever they might've been last saved. And if you have a multi-monitor setup, they're not reliable. I don't personally like using pop-up forms myself, but since this is modal, you can see I can't click behind it. Okay. All right, so that's all of those, I think, right? We got AC hidden, window, normal, icon, dialogue. All right, let me get rid of that. We'll go back to normal. And the last option, which I don't think you can see. Okay, you can see, it's a way over there. Open args. What is open args? Open args is you can send a parameter into the form when it opens. Like you can send a parameter in here like, um, you know, like uh, my color equals blue or something like that. 
You can send any kind of information you want into the form and it's treated as a parameter, as an open argument, okay? And if you want to learn more about open args and the modal pop-up stuff, go watch my custom message box video. I teach you how to use open args in here. We open up a form, which is our custom message box, and we can send into it an open args that says, hey, make your color this, make the prompt that, make the caption this, these are the number of buttons you need, and so on. Those are open arguments. Okay, and one more thing I like to mention to people when we're talking about this is that you don't need all of these commas in here. If all you want is the where condition, I always make a joke in my videos so my students will remember it. I say, okay, do command open form, form name, and then I go comma, 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 right? Like comma, 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 yeah. Because I do stupid things in my lesson so you remember that. So you remember there's three commas there before the where condition. But if you don't want to do that, you can literally just come in here and say where condition colon equals customer ID equals customer ID like that. Okay, that colon equals allows you to put that anywhere on that line that you want to. If you see other code where people do this, this is the exact name of the parameter right here. And then you're just specifying the value. And that way you don't have to have all these commas in here and get the right spot. You just make sure you have the right name. Okay, so there you go. So that's 99.9% .9 of everything that I've ever used do command open form for, all right? All those other little parameters that I said, don't worry about them, don't worry about them. I, I, I've never, I don't really use them and I've been doing this a long, long, long time. <laughs> and if you wanna learn more, if you like learning with me, if you like my videos and how I teach, well, I got tons of developer lessons where not only do we cover do command open form, but we cover a lot of the other do command stuff. There's lots of commands in the do command stuff and I cover most of them <laughs> over my developer course. So check it out. It's on my website. I'm thinking I'm up to 48 now, 48 levels. So lots of stuff for you to learn. But that's going to do it for today, folks. That's your tech help video. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsors. Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions. Manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Sammy Shama with Shama Consultancy, a certified Microsoft Access expert who offers personalized one-on-one -on -one tutoring. And Amanda Nicole Consulting, specializing in helping businesses move from complex Excel sheets to an Access database. You'll find links to the Diamond sponsors in the description down below the video. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. 
And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.